Hello once again for our second workshop demonstration in which today we will be preparing Vasli paper. The paper that we use for Indian miniature painting and drawing is called Vasli and uh, it uh, is made by gluing together three sheets of paper and uh, the paper that we I use it comes from Rajasthan in a little village called Sanganer where we have some of the last few remaining families who are making traditional handmade paper. Usually it, it's made of cotton rag, uh, hemp and jute fiber and but you can also use any other paper. For example in Pakistan when I was studying this practice we didn't have access to handmade paper at all. So we would just use any normal drawing sheet like Canson sheet as long as it's completely as, as long as it's smooth to uh, make a vasli. A vasli is just about gluing together sheets of paper and you could even experiment with other types of paper and sheets of paper. So the first step for that and then I'll just run through all the material that we need for that. Of course we need paper, if it's very thin sheets of paper you can use three or four. If it's thick paper you can use two, depends on uh, whatever thickness you want. Then we have a little container of water, a little brush to apply the glue. And of course we have the glue itself along with some cheesecloth. And then uh, I will start with telling you how we prepared the glue itself. The glue is called lai and uh, the, the first step is to make it and it is made out of flour, cooking flour. So we take flour, um, if you're just making a few sheets of paper you can use half a cup of uh, flour and then maybe three, two and a half to three cups of water and then uh, first and foremost you take just the flour and pass it through a sieve so that all the uh, dirty particles and other things uh, can be uh, thrown away and then you mix two or three cups of water and make sure to mix them very well with your hand so that it, there aren't any clumps left. So take your time, mix them properly in the pot, just normal water and flour until all the globules and uh, coagulations and the particles are all mixed into the water and then turn the stove on to around 5 or s between 5 and 7 so it's uh, you know medium high heat and then the key is to take a ladle and keep mixing it constantly and that's something that takes a little while. Initially it will start to cook and boil pretty fast. So the idea is to let the flour in the water cook down. As you can see as I cook it's pretty thin and watery but pretty quickly it starts to get uh, thick and uh, once it starts to bubble and get really thick put another cup of water in it and then it will become diluted again and keep mixing it again and it will take maybe four to five or six minutes uh, of constant stirring for it to gradually start becoming thick again. The key is to constantly stir the pot because if you stop stirring it will start to congeal in places and it will start forming lumps and we do not want any lumps in our glue. So if you keep mixing it for five to seven minutes again gradually it will start to get thick and it will start to cook and bubble up and a lot of smoke will be rising. Add maybe another half cup of water again. So this is the third time that we are going through the same process all over again. So this process of water and starch being cooked, it gets thick, put water, go through that process again gets thick again, put some more water, do it three times or four times. And you can see uh, how I keep testing the uh, stickiness of the starch uh, of this glue. Initially it's very watery so it will just draw, drip away from the spoon but by the third or fourth time of adding water and letting it thicken down you should have a stringy quality to the uh, st this flour glue when you drip it off from the ladle it should have this stringy quality that it, it shouldn't be uh, coming down in drops it should have this sort of sticky stringy quality that's when you know that it's ready. And finally after the third or fourth time then you can just uh, turn the stove off 
take it, take the pot off from the fire or the stove and then let it cool down for maybe five minutes. And after that, we pass it through a sieve once again. You can also use a cheesecloth, which you can double up and, and use that as a sieve. Or you can just use a kitchen sieve, which has a very tight weave to it. So that any, um, uh, any uh, places that it's, it's clumps, any clumps don't go through, because we don't want any clumps in our final solution. And after you have passed it through the sieve, then you just put a wet cloth on top of it and let it cool down a little bit. And then you have your glue, the flour glue, ready to be used for making a vasli. So here we have our glue, uh, our starch, which is ready. We call it lay. Um, in more humid climate, you would actually, we uh, would put copper sulfate, a touch of copper sulfate in it, which is poisonous, but uh, it repels bugs as well as molding. But here in the Northeast and in, in, in Northern America, you don't really need it, so I, I don't put it. So it's completely safe, it's just flour and water, so it's pretty safe to use. Take a sheet and just damp it a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. You take a little bit of the starch, or the glue, the lye. It's dried because it was outdoor, out in the day, so just making it solvent again. So we want it to be as a paste, not too thick, but not too runny either. And it dries pretty quickly, especially in this dry uh, weather where all the heating is on all the time, so it dries really quickly. So just diluting it again to make it into a nice paste, making sure there's no clumps. So mixing it really well. So now you can see the consistency. Then we take some and just maybe add a little bit more water. and apply it on the blank sheet. Make sure to get all the corners also. We don't want any dry area here. But we don't want to flood it with the glue either because if too much glue will, if you apply too much glue, it'll, uh, it won't bind into the paper. It'll just uh, come out very quickly. So. So we let this rest here while we do the same thing with the other paper. A little water, dampen it, and do the same thing with this. And then just make these grooves with your hands. It makes the glue stick better this way. And then I will ask, I'll, I have to wear my mask on because I would like to ask Rebecca if she can kindly assist me in just helping me put the papers together.
So if you can just hold this from the top. Thank you. And I'll align, maybe I'll bring it here. Is this, and then if you just hold it at the top, so there's a little bit of tension and we just join the corners here and here, wait. And then I'll just push it gently because I don't want any bubbles in, in this sheet. And we put these two together. There shouldn't be any bubbles in between. There you go. Thank you. Wonderful. This paper is pretty, f uh, it can sort of tear easily. So what we can do is take out any excess glue, any excess glue that we have here, we can just gently push it out. Not put too much uh, weight on it because the paper can tear. But what I'm doing here is just taking out any excess glue. Sure, the table remain, remains clean because we don't want the paper to get stuck on the table with glue because then that'll be a mess. So I did it from one side, then I'm doing it from the other side as well. Taking out the any excess glue that's in between the two sheets. Because if it's only glue that is touching, then that will dry up and it'll, the paper will uh, rip open. It won't stick very well. So we need some paper to touch, both papers to touch as well along with the glue. And for the glue to get absorbed into the fiber. In the end, you can just do a little bit of uh, flattening of the, yeah. And just be very careful to lift it. And I know there's some little glue over here, so I just clean it out before I put the second sheet. I'm going to put some water here. And then we repeat that step again. For our third sheet. Sprinkle it with some water apply a little bit of glue here Same on that first sheet. Because this top layer has no glue, we have to apply it. So we can, we can do it with one ha person as well, but it's a little clunky and it's a little difficult. So it's nice to have two people doing it together. And now I'll tell you a little trick 
So we do the same thing. Could you lift it up? Well, so that I'll show there's one other option that you do this. You apply the sheet. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. And then, uh, Rebecca, well, there's one step. If you want to really make sure that the paper and the glue are really well uh, applied and are going to really bind together, you can lift it up again and then switch it. Then the fibers and the glue make these almost un invisible sort of grooves that they fit into when you turn it around, they gel together really beautifully. And now we'll do it for the final time. Thank you. There you go. So the motion that I was doing as I was pushing it was like this, like a butterfly sort of. Uh, so that making sure that there are no bubbles in between. Even then some bubbles can come, so we just make, gently try to press them out, very gently, not too hard, otherwise the paper will tear. So actually, with my thumb, I'm guiding all the excess glue in between the sheets to one side. So there's a system to this as well. I'm just pushing it with my thumb, all of that glue that's inside between the sheets to one side, and there it comes out. We don't want to press it too hard also because we don't want to take all of the glue that's inside as well. We just want to take gently just the excess glue that's in between the sheets. So we've taken out the excess glue. I'm just giving it a nice gentle rub with my cheesecloth here just to even out any possible bubbles inside or any place where the glue might have congealed more. So just trying to evenly spread it out. And then what we do is, let's clear out this half of the table. Make sure there's absolutely no glue here. So I'll take a clean cloth and completely clean it up. And place a dry piece of newsprint. Be very careful when taking this out. We don't want the papers to come apart. All right. and place it in some newspaper. Just using a few sheets here. You can use actual newspaper at home if you want. And then what we do is, 
we place it under a lot of weight. So here we're really fortunate that we have a lot of drawing boards here. So I'm just gonna leave it underneath the bottommost uh, drawing board and just let it rest for uh, overnight. You can let it rest for overnight or maybe two, three days. And then once it's dry, you can take it out and it's ready. And then we will come to the next step uh, next week when, in which I tell, show you how to burnish the vasli because now we will have our vasli ready once it's dry we will burnish it and then we'll apply a thin coat of safeda white pigment on it in order to close any possible uh, gaps or holes or uh, all the fiber and everything just to flatten it like a priming uh, material and then we'll start our drawing on that.